Back in the eerie depths of the late 80s, I found myself toiling away at a seed and feed store nestled in the chilling northern U.S. Days passed in a mundane haze until a single innocuous post on our community bulletin board shattered the monotony of my existence. It beckoned with promises of a job as a caretaker on a nearby farm, its words dancing like phantoms in the shadows of my mind. Intrigued by the enigmatic offer, I dialed the number listed, its digits haunting my fingertips as they pressed against the cold surface of the phone. Little did I know, this call would plunge me into a nightmare from which I could never truly awaken. The voice on the other end, though human in form, seemed to whisper secrets from beyond the grave. They spoke of a temporary role, a fleeting opportunity cloaked in uncertainty. Yet, like a moth drawn to the flickering flame of fate, I could not resist its allure. Dreams of Florida, bathed in moonlight and shrouded in mist, danced before my eyes, tantalizingly close yet ever out of reach. The number, a mere conduit to the realm of the unknown, belonged to the owner's children, harbingers of a fate yet to unfold. They spoke of an elderly father, a mere shell of his former self, struck down by a stroke that rendered him powerless, his fate hanging in the balance like a specter in the night. And so, I found myself thrust into the heart of darkness, a lone caretaker tasked with tending to the farm's barren lands. No crop swayed in the chilling breeze, no harvest reaped beneath the pale light of the moon. Only a pair of horses, their eyes gleaming with an otherworldly intelligence, bore silent witness to the secrets that lay buried beneath the soil. Days blurred into nights as I toiled amidst the shadows, my soul haunted by whispers of a past long forgotten. But the tranquility of my existence was shattered by a knock that echoed like a death knell upon my door. I opened it, my heart pounding in my chest, only to be greeted by a swarm of figures clad in suits and FBI jackets, their faces obscured by the shadows that clung to them like specters of the night. They thrust papers into my trembling hands, words dripping with malice and foreboding. A warrant, they claimed, to search the very depths of the farm, to unearth the secrets that lay hidden beneath its soil. Panic seized me like a vice as I stumbled backward, my mind a swirling maelstrom of terror and uncertainty. Yet, as the investigators combed the land like scavengers in search of prey, a sense of dread settled over me like a shroud. The farm, once a haven of tranquility, now echoed with the whispers of the damned, their voices rising from the depths of the earth like an unholy choir. And then they came. The vultures of the media, their cameras flashing like the eyes of a thousand demons. They descended upon the farm like a plague, their voices raised in a cacophony of chaos and despair. I retreated into the darkness of the farmhouse, the walls closing in around me like the jaws of some ancient beast. As the hours stretched into eternity, the truth slowly emerged from the darkness, like a specter rising from the grave. The farm's kindly owner, a man of seemingly gentle demeanor, was revealed to be a pawn in a game of shadows and deception. His ties to the underworld, a sinister web woven with threads of blood and betrayal, cast a pall over the land like a curse from beyond the grave. Haunted by the revelation, I grappled with the realization that I had unwittingly stumbled into a realm of darkness from which there could be no escape. The farm, once a sanctuary from the horrors of the world, had become a prison of my own making, its walls closing in around me like the jaws of some ancient beast. In the end, I made the only choice I could to flee from the darkness that threatened to consume me whole. With trembling hands and a heart heavy with dread, I packed my belongings and fled into the night, leaving behind the horrors of the farm to fade into the mists of memory. As I drove away, the echoes of the past whispered in my ears, a reminder of the darkness that lurks beneath the surface of the world. And though I may have escaped its clutches, the memory of those haunting days will forever linger in the recesses of my mind a chilling reminder of the thin veil that separates the world of the living from the realm of the dead. Cheryl and I are the proud owners of a farm in Buckingham, Iowa, primarily dedicated to cultivating corn. It was August of 2018, and on one slightly rainy night, 
Our otherwise peaceful rural life took an unexpected turn. Both Cheryl and I had spent our entire lives immersed in the farming lifestyle, and the vastness of the Iowa landscape meant lots of space and very few people. Our closest neighbors, George and Kenny, each lived about half a mile away in opposite directions, both fellow farmers. Living in such proximity makes it easy to form close bonds with neighbors. We often had George and Kenny, along with their wives, over for gatherings and vice versa. This particular weekend night, George and his wife joined us for some drinks, and we found ourselves engrossed in board games until around 11 p.m. Luckily, their drive home was a straightforward 30-second journey. After they left, Cheryl and I decided to unwind with some wine and one of our favorite movies. As the night progressed, the effects of the wine started to take hold, and we were on the verge of dozing off on the couch when an unusual event occurred, a knock at the front door. Receiving a knock at such an hour was unprecedented for us, accompanied by what sounded like a voice uttering something. Lowering the TV volume, we waited for it to happen again. About 20 seconds later, another set of knocks followed by a muffled voice reached us saying, we need help. I was ready to investigate, but Cheryl held me back, shaking her head in disagreement. We exchanged a glance, and she whispered that we shouldn't let them know we were home. Despite her reservations, I approached the door and asked, Who is it? The voice on the other side claimed they were lost and needed assistance. Wanting more verification, I requested to hear the wife say something. After a brief silence, the voice responded, claiming she wasn't next to him at the moment. Red flags started popping up in my mind as the voice seemed off, almost like someone attempting to disguise their true tone. Trying to confirm their identity, I asked for George, thinking it might be him playing a prank due to his playful nature. The voice affirmed it was George, but now with a slightly deeper tone. While I felt a momentary sense of relief, I hesitated to open the door without further confirmation. To test their claim, I asked for George's wife's name. The response was unsettling. That's a trick question. My instincts kicked in, and I decided to call George directly for clarification. Cheryl urged me to contact the police, sensing the unusual and potentially dangerous situation. George answered, denying being at our front door and expressing concern. He promised to hurry over, and we hung up. While still in a somewhat intoxicated state, we heard more knocks at the door. Frustrated and alarmed, I threatened, I have a shotgun waiting for you if you don't leave now. The voice persisted, claiming they only needed to use a phone. Cheryl wisely dialed 911, knowing it would take a considerable amount of time for an officer to arrive in our remote location. As we waited, we heard footsteps on our wooden deck wrapping around the house. Multiple sets of footsteps stopped at one of our windows, where blinds were drawn. One of them attempted to lift the window open, prompting Cheryl to scream, Leave us alone! I joined in, yelling for them to get out or face the consequences. It took me a moment to realize I should retrieve my shotgun from upstairs. Just as I reached the top of the stairs, there were more pounds at the door. This time, it was George's actual voice yelling, Open up! I quickly let him in, relieved to have someone familiar with us, along with his shotgun. George assured us he hadn't seen anything upon his arrival and stayed with us until the police officer reached our house. After a brief property scan, the officer left and we took his advice to heart, installing security cameras on the front and back, a precaution we hadn't considered until that night. The memory still sends chills down my spine, realizing that a simple wooden door was all that stood between us and whatever presence lurked on our front deck that unsettling night. This unsettling incident occurred at my grandparents' farm during the summer of 2018. It was a night when I found myself alone, as my grandparents were away, and I had been tasked with watching over the farm for a couple of nights. On the last night of my solo farm sitting, I was casually watching TV in the living room when a peculiar noise caught my attention from outside in the cornfield. Initially, I brushed it off, assuming it might be a deer. However, my nonchalance shifted when all the cows suddenly began mooing simultaneously. Ordinarily, cows might moo individually, 
but a collective uproar indicated something was amiss. Being the sole person on the farm, the responsibility fell on me to investigate. I prepared to go outside, but just as I was about to step out, a high-pitched cow scream pierced the air, halting me in my tracks. The sense of something terribly wrong with the cows intensified. In a moment of decision, I rushed upstairs to my grandpa's room, where I knew he kept a few guns under his bed. Loading his hunting rifle, I ventured outside. The persistent mooing led me to the barn where, to my relief, all the cows appeared to be present. However, my relief was short-lived when I noticed one cow missing from its stall, a cow I was sure had been tied up there earlier. Driven by a faint moose-like sound from the cornfield, I went outside. As I approached, I thought I heard what resembled distant conversations. Frustrated and growing more anxious, I fired two rounds into the air, plunging the surroundings into silence. The cows hushed, and the field seemed quiet until I heard footsteps. The decision to venture into the cornfield wasn't an easy one, but as a farmer I knew the necessity of investigating. Deeper into the field, I heard multiple pairs of footsteps beside me, heightening my unease. Suddenly, frozen in place, I spotted a person dressed in all black down one of the corn rows, just a few feet away. Reacting, I raised my gun, instructing the figure to leave. Despite my stern warning, the person, undeterred, continued approaching, signaling me to lower my weapon. I aimed again, shouting for them to go away, only to realize that I was surrounded by several others, all dressed in dark clothing. To my horror, they all wore eerie masks. The tension escalated, and the group stood in silence before commencing a chant in an unfamiliar language. The fear was indescribable, and the possibility of being part of some sinister ritual crossed my mind. Seizing an opportunity, I sprinted down a few rows and, out of breath, fired several rounds in their direction, causing them to scatter. Returning to the farmhouse, I came across a disturbing sight, a cow head surrounded by candles in the middle of a circle. Overwhelmed, I made a call to the police, providing all the details I could muster. An officer arrived, searched the barn and part of the cornfield, discovering the gruesome scene. After a conversation with my parents, who were promptly informed of the situation, I anxiously awaited their arrival. The farm, now an active crime scene, prompted a police search team. My parents took the incident seriously, and the farm underwent a significant upgrade with a high-tech security camera system. The motives behind the mysterious group remain unknown, but their disturbing activities, resembling some form of animal sacrifice ritual, have left a lasting impact on me. As fate would have it, I happen to be the lone individual at the farm, chosen as the unwitting participant in their unsettling ceremony.